Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I am your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, here for another fun interview. And I cannot wait because the pre-interview with this gentleman has been already so much fun. So I am introducing you now to Kevin McLaughlin. He's a single parent, a team leader, and a student of his industry and the people in it, and a professional musician. A minor outpatient procedure that put him on the couch for six weeks showed him that he needed to build a financial foundation on something sturdier than his own back. Direct Sales has provided him with a way to spend more time with his kids, and now that they're grown, he uses that flexibility to build his musical career. He's not had a job in over 25 years, and he is very happy about that. So welcome, Kevin, to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Very good. So first of all, we got to tell everybody, what company are you with? Well, I am an independent associate with a company called Legal Shield. Wonderful. And how long have you been with Legal Shield? Because you said you haven't had a job in 25 years. Yeah, well, 13 of those have been with Legal Shield. Awesome. That's really good because seriously, the, the Federal Trade Commission has a number out there that is absolutely staggering to me. And that is 90% of people are in and out of direct sales in five years or less, which means you are part of the 10% who made it more than five years. In fact, you've almost already tripled that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I have to be honest with you. I did quit once for about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> it was the worst 20 minutes of my life. Yeah. Um, right. It's, but, and you know, as soon as I got onto the point where I'm thinking, all right, what am I going to do now? There, there was nothing on the list. So I unquit myself. There you go. It, it, and God, if that isn't the truth, how many of us have that roller coaster ride where we're like, high as a kite because we just brought some people onto our team. We had the best sales month ever. And then like the next month, like where'd everybody go? What happened? Like it, it is such an up and down at times business, especially if you don't have a plan, which I know for you with Legal Shield planning is super important, right? But before we get into all of that, how did you get into Legal Shield? Well, it's a long, drawn-out, boring story, so I'm going to save you the, the, <laughs> de- the gory details, but it started with a hurricane, honestly. Hmm. My house was smashed flat in the hurricane of 2004. In Florida, in 2004, we had like, I don't know, seems like 37 hurricanes in one year, yeah. but Francis and Jean both plowed my house within 10 days of each other, <gasps> and so on a recommendation, I got a hold of a contractor to fix my house. And of course, when everyone in the state suddenly needs a contractor, it's kind of hard to find one. Mm. So, you know, based on this recommendation, I hired a contractor and this guy very quickly proceeded to repair my roof at 10 times the normal rate, build my insurance company before I even talked to him, and then leaned my property for the balance of my insurance benefits to the penny. I have no idea how he was able to even do all that, but that's what happened by the time I turned around. And not long after that, I got into Legal Shield. And for the first time in my life, I was able to have someone take a look at a contract before I signed it. Mm. And, you know, with with the, you know, the, the Neanderthal caveman like reasoning I had at the time, I was like, let's see, I signed a one page contract and I got totally ripped off by my roofer. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, the next contract I signed was in selling that house because there was nothing I could do with it. And I, a friend of mine was a house flipper. And for the first time in my life, I was able to say, yeah, this looks like a great deal. And I totally trust you and everything. But I'm going to have my attorneys review this contract before I sign it. And as a result, I saved like $3,800 at closing. So 
I was able to say, let's see, no attorneys signed a contract, bad. Uh, Another contract used attorneys, good. (laughs) And, you know, I never went back. I love it. That's so awesome. And how did you get introduced to Legal Shield? Like, was it just a fluke or somebody, somebody you knew brought you into it? Yeah, oh yeah, as a friend of mine. Actually, we, I was at, uh, I'm, I ride a Harley. So I was sitting in Daytona for Biketoberfest. This uh, October is going to be my 14th anniversary in the company. And a friend of mine, longtime good friend, was telling me about all of the stuff that he was buying. And, you know, we're sitting at the Iron Horse Saloon in Daytona. And I'm like, listen, buddy, there's no girls listening. You're not here to impress anybody. I know you can't buy all that stuff. Like, what's really going on? Yeah. And he's like, no, no, I can. I can. Uh, I, I've got this side project going on called Legal Shield. And by the time he and I parted ways, I was all set up and a um, full-fledged uh, uh, affiliate with the company. That is awesome. And so, you know, obviously we all have our ups and downs, as I referred to at the, be- at the beginning of the conversation, you know, what have been some of the really cool things you've achieved either through Legal Shield or because of Legal Shield in your life or your business that you, you really point at because of your, your affiliate with them? Oh my gosh. Well, I can tell you this, not long ago, I had somebody who looked me up and he was like, wow, you because I don't think about that stuff very much. Mm-hmm. He's, but he, he's like, yeah, I looked you up. I've, there's pictures of you online speaking in front of thousands of people. Like you do all kinds of cool stuff. Like, yeah, I want to do what you do. And, and he, he really put a light on it for me. You know, I, I've won some awards in the company. I've like, I've helped a lot of people change their life. You know, there's all of that, but you know, really I'm just trying to better myself, better society and pay my bills in the process. So I kind of lose sight of the accolades that go on as a result. And I'm not really one to draw attention to myself. I, I just like to say that I'd, I've really been able to learn a lot about myself, learn a lot about how I can make our society a lot better and design the life that I really, really want in the process. I love that because I just had a, a great conversation with another coach And one of the things that came up in that conversation was what are some of the backwards things that people do in their lives? And one of the things that that she and I came up with is we see people all the time designing their business, designing their business, designing their whatever, but they don't design their life. They're not picking what they want out of life first and then designing their business around it, which it sounds like you have, because based on your introduction, you, number one, you haven't had a job in 25 years. So your, How your cool businesses, is that? I know. Can you stand it? I can barely stand it when people say that. I love it so much. I, it, right. And it's like, well, how do you make a living then? Well, it's called entrepreneurship, right? So it's having that opportunity to really be able to design your life and start with, you know, Hey, what do I want out of life? Well, I want to be there for my kids and I want to be able to pay all my bills and not worry where the next one's coming from. Right. That's just for most people, that's not their current reality. And so the opportunity to do this is huge. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that word backwards because it wasn't long ago within the last 18 months, really, that I came to the realization that, Everybody does everything backwards, myself included. <laughs> and okay, you're, you're, we got to go deeper into that. Yeah. Well, your job example is the first thing. Like backwards thinking is the norm, but it is when you're thinking backwards, it's frontwards because that's how you think, right? So it's, and it's not our fault. I mean, that's how we're taught to do things. Yeah. But like, Examples in society like that have nothing to do with what, what we're doing right now. Like the, the, the movement to increase the minimum wage, you know, like I can't afford to pay for anything, so I need to triple my income. Okay, well, that's backwards because what happens to the dollar menu at McDonald's when the, the labor cost to make a dollar hamburger quadruples? Mm. It's going to be the $5 menu, and now you can't even you, – you, your ability to afford things is even worse – Because there's profit on top of your wages. Jobs are not the answer. Jobs are a great place to start, but they are Mm -hmm. not where you want to end up. Gosh, yes. 
Yes. Now we're two entrepreneurs, right? So obviously we're on board with this. And I, I love that we're having this conversation because literally the episode that went live this week is with the gal who wrote the book for people who are kind of iffy about network marketing or, or probably the a better term for it is they're not just iffy, iffy but they're, they're downright skeptical and opposed to network marketing and, and the way that it works. And, and so the fact that you're a living example of the success that comes from this is, is awesome because it's, it is totally backwards from what, what we've been told, what we were taught from the time we were kids, get a job, you know, do 40 hours a week for 40 years, the 40, 40 rule. Right. And 40, 40 is a thing of the past. It, it has been for a long time. It's just that most people don't realize that yet. Yep. And the the beauty of working in the direct selling industry is that you get paid exactly what you're worth. Now, that can be a curse, but... <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> and it can be very disheartening to find out what you're actually worth in the marketplace when you're not hiding behind a giant corporate logo. Right. But... All of that plays into this whole example of backwards thinking. So yeah, I want to cut to a little bit of the chase here because mm -hmm. let's face it, I'm kind of preaching to the choir if I'm if I understand this correctly. So I, I want to really kind of explain how I came to this conclusion, uh, and it was just a little less than two years ago. Um, I had a major change in my music career. I was like basically as the CEO of my band, the founder and CEO of my band, when the board of directors got together, they voted me off of the island and I was no longer a member of the band. So I was like, how in the heck does that happen? Like, <laughs> I don't even know. So it, it forced me to change my thinking and, and, mm -hmm. and to set it up. The traditional procedure when you're a musician and you want to perform live is, you know, you, you go out and you comb the earth for the perfect amount of people. And that takes a long time to experiment with and find a good combination. It's like being married to three or four other people. Yeah. And then, you know, you rehearse forever until you wish you were dead. You learn a bunch of songs, you write a bunch of songs. And then once you've got your act together, you go out and you try to find some work, which takes time. And then here in Florida, you know, by the time, you've you you know well i should say in most bands that play at at the local level you know they rehearse forever and then they play one or two gigs and then they break up because everybody realizes they actually don't like each other <laughs> um so i decided to do everything in the opposite direction what i did was i went out and i booked a bunch of shows <laughs> okay as a result of having the shows i was able to hire some excellent musicians and now that I've got people that want to perform with me, I had to go out and write some songs so that we would have something to play. So I, I did it in the exact reverse order of normal. And what I found is that it was ragingly more productive to do it that way. Like it was backwards to try and find a, people who wanted to work with me when I didn't have any work set up. Once I set up some work, it was easy to find people that wanted to work with me, if that makes any sense. It, it makes perfect sense. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause I, I, I've, you know, I haven't been in the music scene in about 20, almost 20 years, but I, I did, I did a little stint as a, as a backup singer for a while. And I definitely agree. It, that makes perfect sense because trying to almost every musician I've ever known who started a band did it the, the original way of thinking that you were talking about. I've never heard of someone doing it the way that you did, which is go get some gigs, which I am floored. How do you sell, okay, how do you sell a gig with no band? Well, remember, I was in a band and I've been in a number of bands. So I had the photography of me on stage was done. The connections were already there. Uh -huh. And I was, I was reputed for being able to produce quality product. All right. There so... That, that, that's, that was my first taste of realizing that I had always been doing everything backwards. And so the, the real question is, how does that apply to business and how does it help people? Yeah. So imagine if you're trying to build a sales team and you're recruiting them and they're, you're like, okay, what is it? And you say, well, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we're going to do something, you know, here, be part of my team. That's not going to work. So 
when you actually have something to do, it's easier. And so then now when you're trying to get people out of this mindset of, you know, a job is the way to go and you're trying to get and they're like, okay, I'm going to try it. But first I need to get my ducks in a row. <laughs> and we've all heard that. And how many times, uh, you know, have you heard that? And, and, but when someone says, you know, all right, I need to get my ducks in a row. What they're really saying is, okay, I need to get my affairs in order so I can concentrate on this new thing. Mm -hmm. But what that really means and what people are really saying, and they don't realize they're being backwards. They don't realize it, but this is literally what they're saying. So what I've been doing up till now has not been getting my ducks in a row for me. So mm -hmm. I'm going <laughs> to attempt to accomplish my goal with my current solution that has proven not to work before I start on this new solution that actually does work. Yes. Like how backwards is that? That is completely backwards. I love it. And, you know, and it just, and it makes perfect sense given the number of people out there who are not willing to take risks, you know, because it, it's just the way our brains are wired and the way that most of us are nurtured is to always do the safe thing, right? Always do the, the thing where, you know, you've got X amount of income coming in guaranteed. And it's like, well, that's only guaranteed as long as the company wants you or needs you. Yes, but what's the name of this podcast? I, you know, if we're going to make a play on words, BDSM is not all, it, it, it's all about pushing the envelope of safety. Yeah. It's about being as far away from safety as you can and still be able to stand it. Yeah. So for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's why we also have a safe word during all of this too. Exactly. When, it's not, when the boundary is too far, we got a safe word. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not reckless abandon. It's not abuse. It's just taking you to the edge and looking over, like leaning way far over and getting the thrill of being on the edge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I definitely have to agree with that because network marketing is, is one of the safest risks, you know, or d direct sales or multi-level marketing, whatever you want to call it, one of the three, which I know are all very different actual business models, but people use the three terms interchangeably, right? But it's one of the safest things you can do in the world of entrepreneurship. If you're somebody who's, who's said since they were a kid, I want to start a business. I want to start a business, but I don't know how, I don't know what product, I don't know whatever. This is the perfect place to get in there and, and learn how to do business concepts such as sales, such as, you know, planning out your week and scheduling and having conversations and building relationships and, and being able to then also become a leader, which is so much better than being a manager. Ugh. Oh, gag, gross. Yeah. Manager, right? manager, it, everything rolls downhill to the manager. They are the ones that take the, take the most resort. And I've got to tell you that uh, what did I say? They take the most abuse in any company the manager. Nobody mm -hmm. wants that. Um, I have to tell you that I could not possibly agree with what you're saying any more than I, I do. The traditional thing of, okay, here we are saying having a job is not where you want to end up. So open up a company. So what am I going to do? I'm going to quit my job, cash in my 401k, pay rent on a location, order a bunch of inventory, um, get an incredible incredibly ridiculous large ad campaign on radio and TV and then unlock the door on the first day and then pray that someone shows up and buys something. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. How about this? How about start a direct selling business on the side from your day job without taking anything away from what you've got going on and build it up in your spare time until it matches your day job income and now you have options. How much more sense does that make? So much more sense. And yet it is still backwards to a vast majority of the country, you know, they, in the world even, I would think, it, because it's just not seen as, as acceptable, I guess. It, and again, because it doesn't feel safe to them because there's no guarantee. Well, there's no guarantee because everybody's different in the level of, of work that they're willing to put into their business. And it really, and I, I, I was just telling somebody this today. One of the biggest differences I see between those who are successful in network marketing and direct sales and those who aren't is a level of hunger and a level of commitment. The hungrier you are to achieve X, Y, or Z, 
the more likely you are to succeed because you you decide that this is your option. This is what's going to get you out of that 40, 60, 80 hour a week job that is sucking your soul dry in some cases. In other cases, it's just physically exhausting and you know you can't, that there's no way you're going to be able to to be a nurse until you're 55, 60, 65 years old, 14 hour, you know, 10, 12, 14 hour days on your feet, not going to be an option, right? So moving into something that has, you know, your physical in, in mind or whatever it may be, right? That level of hunger, that level of commitment is, is the biggest difference between those who su- succeed and those who don't because they are willing to go learn while they earn, Absolutely. Which brings me to another backwards thing. With my business, there are typically two types of people that get started. There's those that want to sit down and learn everything before they get going Mm -hmm. so that they can get going. Or there's those ones that want to earn while they learn. So, you know, go sit down and learn everything there is to know. And by the time you learn all of that, they've probably changed half of it and you haven't made any money yet. (laughs) <laughs> um, True. And, and a good friend of mine, he said it best. He was like, you can become an unpaid expert or a well-paid amateur. And, you know, I, I teach that you need to learn with on the job training because when there's a paycheck attached to a lesson, you don't have to work hard to retain it. Amen to that. So yeah, you've got to, you've got to go out and do it. Like, you know, do something, even if it's wrong. And then that's how you learn it's wrong is by doing it. You can't learn if it's right or wrong just by reading it in a book. You know, book smarts versus street smarts, street smarts are entirely different. Oh, definitely. And my listeners know, because they've heard me say this before, the only failure in direct sales is the person who gives up, right? Because even when you have something not work out the way you wanted to, that's a learning experience. You've learned something that doesn't work. Okay, don't do that again. Or don't do that again with that population of people, right? It's, you, it's a learning experience. You're, you're, you're learning while you earn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. You know, it's this wonderful, great cycle that you get to do both at the same time. And direct sales, network marketing, multi-level marketing is a self-development opportunity with a paycheck attached. Yeah, no question. No question about it. And, you know, the the other backwards mentality that you get from the job world is that a failure is a problem. <laughs> and when you're an entrepreneur, no, failure is part of the goal. Because you go out and you do it and you, at the end, you plan, do review, where did I fail? Okay, I'm not going to do that again. And then next time you do it, you're that much better. And that's a continuing process. And so success is not about the destination. Success is about the person that you become in the process of, you know, going to that destination. All right, so there's the title of the podcast right there. (laughs) Success is the person you become. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is so, so true. Well, I have to reveal my source. I got that from Jim Rohn. Yeah, and I I knew I I had heard it somewhere, but doesn't matter. It's going to be the title because it got said here. And if people hadn't heard that before... Now they know, right? They can go look that up because surprisingly, there are people who have never heard of Jim Rohn. <sighs> oh my gosh. How can, you li- how can you even enjoy life without knowing about Jim Rohn? I, I know, absolutely. So we're, we're talking about, you know, failure not being a bad thing. So what would you say in, in your 13 years has been a, an obstacle that you've encountered So obviously not a failure, but an obstacle you've encountered that you've been able to overcome. Well, the the you you know this. The best thing about being an entrepreneur is that there's no boss over your shoulder cracking the whip, making you do stuff. Mm -hmm. But the worst part about being an entrepreneur is that there's no boss over your shoulder cracking the whip to make you do stuff. Yeah, (laughs) and so and so. One of the many, many things I like about being in this industry is that the only thing between me and everything I want is me. 
Mm. And I can do something about me. I can't change the glass ceiling in an industry. I can't change whether or not men or women make more or less. I can't change the fact that the manager who trained me only taught me enough to fail. I can't change the fact that, you know, I can't change any external things. But you know what? I can change the things about me that are getting the way in the way of my success. And so that's been the journey is, you know, and we know that it's all about the journey, not the destination. Mm -hmm. And the journey has been to sharpen my axe, to make me the person that's capable of achieving my success. Because the person I was when I started in this industry, you know, had it down, had it perfect. I could do everything I needed to do, but I was clueless because I was totally wrong about that. Mm. And if I had any idea how far off of the mark I was personally in order to be able to achieve my goals, I might have been too overwhelmed to even start. But I sat down and I started working on myself. I, I, I failed forward. I went out and did my business and uh, did everything wrong. As a matter of fact, there was no way that I could have done anything wronger <laughs> than I did. And I say it that way on purpose. And it, 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 the, only, the only thing about myself, I, I don't know if it's a skill or a quality or what, but the only thing that I brought into this industry that has attributable to the amount of success that I've got is an pig-headed stubbornness to never quit ever, no matter what. I love it. I love it. I, I, I can definitely see that in you in just the couple of conversations we've had. No, because I, I, I think that was a, a big thing for me too. When I started my own business, when I started in my direct sales business in 2010, was I from the get go said, I am not allowed to quit when I'm down. The only time I'm allowed to say I'm done with this is if I am doing well. Mm. Right. That was an agreement I had with myself. I shared it with my husband at the time. So that way, if I was ever complaining, he knew I wasn't allowed to make a decision to leave the business while during a downtime because that's not fair because this business is dependent upon me. So if I'm having a downtime, guess what? Probably my fault. I didn't do the things I should have or whatever. So I I put that out there and made myself accountable from the get go. So I it, it was, but it was that stubbornness because I was like, well, the only way, the only way that I'm going to be able to like outsmart myself on this one is to do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that's a great strategy. So it was something so that when you know when I did eventually end up leaving my business, I was doing well. But the reason I left is because I I found my calling right, and still with, even with this, it's you know, if I have a bad month or, you know, lose a client or whatever, not allowed to make a decision about my business while I'm in, while I'm down. If I'm not feeling yeah. great, I can't, dis I'm not allowed to make the decision. I have to wait until I'm feeling good. And then I can go, do I still want to do this? Oh, hell yeah. I want to still do this when I'm popping champagne because a client of mine just earned a trip. Hell right. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, makes it so much easier to stick with it when you have that that nice little handy dandy thing. Yeah, and f I, I, I totally agree. And for me, right now, like people, like our society is literally being torn apart right now, and people are are, are rioting in the streets mm -hmm. because they feel as though they don't have, they don't get treated equally, they don't have access to the rights that are supposedly guaranteed to them. They, they, they don't feel as though they have a fair shake from the powers that be. Mm -hmm. And here I am as a legal shield associate. That's exactly what I provide to my customers. So, mm. you know, you don't have to ride in the streets. All you have to do is get a legal shield and you, you'll accomplish the goal. There you go. And then you're, you're covered. You're covered, right? Because then you've got that access. You've got that opportunity to be able to, you know, get the justice you so desire, it sounds like. Yeah, well, um, in America, even though we have the best legal system on the planet, 
it's not functioning as designed and mm. you you only get as much justice as you can afford and that's a problem what 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 i'm doing is making it affordable and making the justice you deserve affordable mm, like it so with 13 years of of success so we we've kind of touched on this a little bit but i want to make sure that we're really hitting it home what's your secret to success in business honestly the secret to success, my secret to success in business is in realizing that there is no secret. Mm. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have been exposed to some genius level mentors and they have taught me things like if I don't discipline myself in my own business, then someone else will discipline me in theirs. Um, mm. You know, there's if, if I'm not making the amount of money that I want to make in my business, there's only two possible reasons. Either I'm not doing it right or I'm just not doing it enough. Mm. So there's, there's no, no silver bullet. There's no shortcut. There's no buy into the top. It, 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 it literally is the fact that there is no secret that this industry is the only true equal opportunity employer and someone regardless of who they are can come into this start conquer your limitations and arrive wherever it is that you decide to earn in life wow i i can't I, that's awesome <laughs> like i'm speechless cuz it's it's so completely true i i you really should go read the flip flop CEO if you haven't already, because really, yes, the flip flop CEO by Janine Finney, because she really she really gets into that whole conversation of this being the true, just like you said, the true equalizer. It's equal opportunity. It doesn't matter where you are when you start. I mean, how many stories do we hear in regardless of the company, product, service? You know, people who say, you know, I started my business with the the very last hundred and forty nine dollars, the last two hundred and ninety nine dollars in my bank account because I had no other options and this became it. And then they turned around and were doing, you know, after a few years of working the process, learning, but very quickly were able to not only make their their starter investment back, but now they're making that starter investment back hourly. You know, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. They're they're making that back by the minute in some cases, right? Because we we do hear about those those tenth of a percent people who are making seven figure businesses or eight figure businesses in direct sales, and how many of them started with their very last dollar, right? Probably so, most of them. True equal opportunity, because yeah. it, you know how many how many CEOs of companies started at their bottom dollar right right, right? Not, not not that's not, that's the exception not the rule exactly exactly whereas in in direct sales and network marketing it really is truly equal opportunity and it's based on how hungry are you how willing are you to do the work um how committed are you to yourself your future and your business right yeah well, and you know, you mentioned that you know, why do people look at this business with contempt? Why this industry with contempt? Mm -hmm. It's really because it's backwards from what we're taught is normal. Yeah, but I'm here to say that what everybody perceives as backwards is actually frontwards, and we've all been doing everything backwards all this time without realizing it. Yep, absolutely. Well, you know, Kevin, if somebody has a question for you, because you are the first person who's ever been on the show from Legal Shield, so you might be the first person they've ever heard utter the words Legal Shield. So if someone has some questions, either they want to talk to you based on uh, on the podcast or they want to get to know more about Legal Shield and, and how you've helped other people be successful, because obviously, like you said, you've you have trained thousands of people in your company. Uh, how can they reach out to you? What's your preferred way for them to, to get a hold of you? Well, probably. Well, I'm going to do the crazy thing and I'm going to give out my phone number because that's literally the best way to get a hold of me. There you and go. It's, 
It's 772-486-2964. You can go to my website, kevinmclaughlin.com. Good luck spelling that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why I gave my phone number. And it is, it is, an, it is my honor to talk to anyone and everyone at length about whatever it is that's relevant. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even just in our short couple of conversations that we've had, because we met through the breakfast club, if I remember correctly, both of us showed up at the breakfast club one time, which is unfortunately no longer around, but they are revamping it in, in a different way. But even just in our couple of short conversations, you, you have a lot of great insight into this business, into this industry. And really, you seem like a, a no holds barred, kick in the pants kind of leader, but not in a way that's going to make someone feel bad about themselves. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, this is something that I say to my team constantly. And it's like, you know what? One of the things that I love about this business, and that phrase I say constantly because I love everything about this business. Mm-hmm. But one of the things I love about this business is that, you know, whatever it is that you feel like you should have done yesterday or the day before or last month, you know what? I grant you complete and total absolution. Like you have, a, today is the first day of the rest of your business and you have a clean slate and a guilty free conscience. Let's just start today to do something to get you closer to where you want to be. Oh, God, I love that. Man, oh, so true. So, so true. So many people allow themselves to bully themselves because of mistakes they've made or areas in their life where they've allowed themselves to maybe let go in in certain things, right? But to be able to Mm -hmm. say, you know what, just let it go because we can't change the past. We start from today. Today's the rest of your business. Yeah. Yeah. My main mentor in this business, um, he, he taught me a great concept. He, and, he, and he said, you know, wherever you are, be there. Mm. And that includes the passage of time. Like, get out of the past. Get your head out of the past. When we talk to people and they react to us, they're, the likelihood of them reacting to the situation that they're in is fairly low. And they're actually reacting to their built up residual from the past. And so like throw it off, like drop it like a book bag after school and just be the only time that literally exists is now. So be here. You know, tomorrow is not even guaranteed. The past needs to stay in the past. What we've got is right now. So what can we do right now? that's going to make a difference for us and everyone else. Oh, yes. And I have, I have to end the episode on that. Cause I got to let people like soak that in. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. I am so glad that we, we serendipitously ran into each other and met because this has been such an amazing insightful conversation, which is not always what necessarily people expect here because they're, they're <laughs> more, you know, but it, we had fun, right? There were still good laughs and, and everything. But oh, you, you are awesome. You are so much fun to, to, to talk with. And uh, I really appreciate being here. Thank you so much. Oh, you are so, so welcome. And now everybody get ready for the next badass episode. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to BadassDirectSalesMastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.